Well, hello, good evening. How are you all? Very, very well, I trust and hope and pray that you are this glorious Wednesday, the 25th of September, um, the season of mists and mellow fruitfulness and various other things like that that basically means it's cold, wet and windy. We've hit autumn and we've hit an exciting time of the year. I'm, I'm mega excited because I'm, I'm in a rush of loveliness this evening. I have the extreme loveliness, the bountilicious babe that is Sav sitting with me as per usual in uh, in the doghouse. How are you doing tonight, Sav? I'm absolutely fine tonight, thank you. How's yourself? Well, I'm 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 walking about and breathing um, as you do. We we uh, as I, I tweeted earlier on, or I might not have tweeted earlier on. My wife has the decorators in, and it's not a euphemism. They're actually <laughs> here with sandpaper and paint, and 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 yes, it's all. It's very strange. It's um, <laughs> I, it took me half an hour to get the the what do you call it the sandings not shavings filings no whatever of old paint out of my hair. Mind it looked nice. It was about the same colour as yours, all red, <laughs> which was which was kind. But in, in 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 the big the big one over there, not not very bright. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the monitor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is is the uh, the best looking part of Eka? I think it's safe to say. We have Laurie and C with us. Laurie, and how are you doing tonight? Um, I'm cool, thank you. Had a lovely evening blackberry picking with my kids. So yes, nice evening. Oh, you've been out blackberry picking. Mm. Yes. I've, did you? Uh, I've got to be careful how I phrase this. No, I'm going to say it the way I thought it. You didn't get a prick in your hand, did you? There were no pricks in my hands because there are too many spiders on blackberry plants, so I let the kids do and the husband do all the picking. I just stood back and pointed. Oh, you're a, you're a, a boss. Y yes, and, yes. And, an overseer, an overseer. Yes. Well, while we've got you on on uh, on main cam, let's find out what's going on with Eka. Tell me what's happening. What's what what's Eka doing? Um, I've been keeping um, my eye on the blog and what have you, and I'm quite liking what I'm seeing there. So what's new, what's new, what's going on, what's happening? Well, I think the last blog was um, obviously all to do with MHRA and Jeremy Mean and, and our lovely letters we had to and from him. Um, and we had to spend quite a lot of time going through a lot of um, FOIs to get all that information out and put it in. And speaking to one of the guys earlier, We've just had, he's just had a whole load more fall on his doorstep this morning. So we've now got a load more to go through and sift through and find any more um, decent bits of information. So hopefully there'll be a few nuggets in there for us. Uh, there's no telling. These things are so full of random stuff. But hopefully there'll be something interesting in there for us. Oh, that's good to hear. should point out mm. for those who uh, don't know, FOI means? Freedom of Information Act. Right. So yes, I... you put in. Sorry, go on. No, it just means that you, you put in a, in a letter to a, um, an official body um, asking for um, information they have on a certain thing and they have to generally have to pass it all back to you, whether it's emails you've asked for or communications between different different groups. Yes, and and, uh, and some of these people prevaricate something and dissemble. Both prevarication and dissembling are, are stock in trade. Uh, for the folks we're talking about, and they do indeed do exactly that. If you go to the uh, the Eka blog um, and have a look at what came out of the MHRA and what's come out of the Freedom of Information requests, you will see that they'll do everything in their power not to tell you what you want to know, even though we would consider it to be in the public interest. Neither, apparently, will Mr Mean engage in meaningful conversation unless it's on his terms. And I've got mm. to say, um, I do have to say this because I'm, I'm well chuffed about this, that he had suggested it might be a good idea for ECA and the MHRA to get together and talk about how they could subsume e-cigs into a medicinal form of regulation. And I was ever so pleased to see that the reply was more or less not going to happen because they ain't medicines. I thought, yes, big tick in the box thumbs up and sloppy kiss because that's mm. brilliant that's that's so well done big kudos for that one um Thank you. it was a trap yeah it was yeah it's no question it was a trap absolutely it was a trap it was he was looking for a way to say well ecker thinks it's all right mm. 
Yeah, it was. And it was it was really frustrating <clears throat> getting that. And you had that split second of going, my God, we've got a door. They want to talk to us. And then when you read and you realised full well that he had no intention of any discussion um, and that lovely phrase of not being able to spare the manpower, whatever it was, it's a real insult that they won't listen to anything whatsoever. Um, but, you know, it was just confirmation of what we all suspected. But, yeah, it stung. Yes, I think the, the, the term he used, he wasn't prepared to commit the resource. That's it, yeah. Singular i.e. Yeah. him he wasn't prepared <laughs> yeah. to talk about it we're going to talk a little bit later on towards the end of the show um about a situation where mr mean will be in a position to talk um and that's all to do with the ASIG summit but we're, we're going to talk about that towards the end of the show prior to then uh i think i'm right in saying am i not laurian that the twitter has gone a little bit crackers with the advertising standards authority today hasn't it yeah, it has. I must admit, must admit, I started my little meltdown at about, I think it was about half past 12 last night, actually, when I first came across the story. And there's been a lot of to and fro and different opinions. And I know you and I certainly have a slightly different opinion on this as well. Yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm going to say that we've got differing experiences, which is mm. why the, the opinions may differ. And that's what I want to talk about. Shall we roll in? Uh, well, hang on. David, get it right. Remember the rules. Sav, has Chad got anything to say so far? Uh, the only comment I've got from Chad so far has come from Funny Tricks, and he says, Mr. Mean is just a jumped-up spokesperson, in his opinion. He's probably not wrong. Mm. I'm not going to disagree. I, I, no. I, I, I honestly don't think that Jeremy Mean makes the rules. I don't think he does. I think he's just a poor bugger that's got to go and tell everybody what they are. Uh, and he's the poor sod that's got to get the, the foot up the backside from everybody that doesn't like what he's got to tell them. Um, to some degree, uh, he, he has a little bit of sympathy from me, but, but tiny little wee bit, vanishingly small. But never mind. Um, let's let's jump to camera four and talk about the ASA, shall we? Are we all we all agreed about that? Jump to camera four and talk about the ASA. I won't do the first one because I've been giggling since I realised. I've been wetting myself. Did you see it or not, Lorian? See oh, what? This. Well, let's let's set the scene, if we can. Let's go back to when the MHRA made an announcement that it was going to regulate electronic cigarettes as medicinal devices. Let's go back to there. And when the Tobacco Products Directive came out, and all of this fandango really took hold earlier on this year, can you, can anybody remember the names of any of the outfits that said, yes, we think that's a great idea? Anybody remember any? Oh, yes. Can you, Lorian? I remember one specific one, but I, I haven't kept up with the, what's gone on today a lot, so I, this might have passed me by. Oh. Well, let's just have a look at the, um, the first lot that's had its bottom spanked by the Advertising Standards Authority, shall we? And here it is. It's, it's an outfit called Nico Sigs. Never heard of them, have you? <coughs> no, nobody's heard of Nico Sigs. Oh, hang on just a minute. We'll ignore that first bit because the background says on the 12th of June, the MHRA announced that following a public consultation, blah, 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 right? We all know all that little lot. And they've got to put that in anyway. But then it says, and I'm going to just highlight that little bit there. There you are. Highlighted. Nicolites Online, a website, www.nicolitesonline.co.uk for Nicolite electronic cigarettes, featured three rotating images at the top of the benefits page. One of the images showed woman holding a cigarette in a glass. Showed woman? Not a woman. Showed woman holding a cigarette in a glass. Text beside the image stated, two. Cheaper than traditional cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes work out to be up to three times cheaper than traditional cigarettes. Beneath the image was the heading, The Benefits of Nicolite Electronic Cigarettes, which listed a number of benefits. The final paragraph was titled, Less Expensive Than Conventional Cigarettes, and displayed text that stated, Nicolite can be significantly less expensive that sick. Tobacco cigarettes. Once you've bought the starter kit, all it needs replacing is the cartomizer that contains liquid nicotine. A cartridge is equivalent to about 20 tobacco cigarettes. If you smoke five cigarettes a day, you stand to save nearly £400 a year if you switch to Nicolite. If you smoke 20 cigarettes a day, the saving would be £1,500 a year. With all these benefits to recommend them, aren't Nicolite e-cigs worth a try? Mm. 
Beneath that appeared a table which displayed figures of the savings consumers could achieve if they replaced conventional cigarettes with Nicolite electronic cigarettes. Blah, 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 all of that. The complainant challenged whether the claim a cartridge is equivalent to about 20 tobacco cigarettes was misleading and could be substantiated. Let's go live and just leave that for the time being. Uh, I'm expecting the chats had something to say. Have they, Sav? They spent a lot of time guessing as to who it was, and a few people actually did get it right that it was Nicolette. Um, and then they were asking, a lot of people didn't know that the ESA could actually do anything about uh, claims made on websites. But Gary Wood has just typed in, I think, pretty much what most of chat were thinking. Here we go again with the BS in the adverts. Mm. Now, by that, I mean, well, let, let me throw it across to Lorian. This whole um, 20 cigarettes per cartridge or 40 cigarettes per cartridge or 50 cigarettes, we've seen all sorts of them. Do you believe it? No, and it's not possible to draw, draw draw a comparison, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't see how, given how differently we use these to how you smoke a cigarette, um, and we know full well that what they got into trouble for was um, they made the claim, and they were asked to substantiate the claim. They then did the test um, and got told, well, no, it's too late, you should have done the test beforehand, um, and really the test wasn't good enough. So, no, we can't... It does us no favours to have this cigarettes per cartridge claim whatsoever is ammunition to show that they are inefficient and unreliable and so on and so forth you're not wrong Let, let's go to the response um that that we got from the asa uh, it says nick or sigs limited explained that following receipt of the complaint the manufacturer tested the product to ascertain how long a cartomizer lasted as you said lorian after they said the test <coughs> showed each cart cartomizer lasted for a minimum of 257 inhalations, an inhalation lasting two seconds. I'm going to stop there. I'm, I'm, I am going to stop there. And I'm going to ask chat. The size of those things is 0.7 mils. I would, I would go so far as to suggest that there's not many of us know how many drags we take per day. But those of you that have got Evix and... Um, MVP version 2s and, and most of the Unicon range that has a display and various other ones that have got counters on. Can you just, if, you, if you've got any idea at all, can you just clatter into chat roughly how many drags a day you take? I know I'm around four to 500, depending on, on what I'm using. Sav, have you got a clue with yours? I'm about the same. I think I'm about, I'm just trying to figure out how to make it tell me on here. <laughs> Everybody, I'm just changing the voltage. <laughs> but yeah, we're getting comments of about 500, 400, 450 to 600, 800 to 850, 500 that was a 60 a day, man, easy. plus. Yeah, do, do have you got any idea how much you use, Lorraine? No idea how many puffs I take, but I know that my puffs are generally sort of for around four to five seconds is my inhale time. Well, that that was going to that was that was my next little bit. Is there anybody in chat that actually has a two second inhale? Is anybody inhaling for that? I'm you getting I'm getting a shaking head there from uh, from South. No, oh, oh. oh, I mean Gillis has just said my draws are substantially longer than two seconds. Whip it up, there's not a bloody chance. <laughs> I know mine's between five and a half seconds and six and a half. Because uh, I always check the EVIC to see if I'm doing doing anything different. Uh, Blaze is saying four seconds. Tom Vapes, five to six seconds. Um, Bad Seeds says two seconds would give nothing. Uh, Phil Hampton says two seconds is a pre draw. Pre -draw? Eight seconds is right. popular. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, um, so, yeah, four to five seems to be normal or five to six sort of seconds seems to be the normal all right so what what we're saying then and this is it, it's not by any means a representative sample just to be fair to everybody but we've got i don't know how, how many have we had 40 responses say i would say so yeah right 40 responses let's say we're averaging six seconds and we're taking somewhere we went from 400 to 800 so let's say 500 draws so that's six seconds times 500, that's 3,000 minutes, 3,000 seconds during the course of the day. I hate to have to put it that way. It's 257, wasn't it? 
257 times 2 is, it's not very many, it's 514. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to guess that of everybody that responded, most people when they were smoking were on about 20 a day. I would say so, yeah. Right. So even our own little empirical bit of guff that we've just done kind of says there's not a hope in hell of these things being 20 a day. Let's go back to where, where the judgment went then because I, I think this is quite interesting and I'm particularly tickled <laughs> because it's Nicolites. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, David. Be balanced. Be balanced. Uh, yes, the approximate, the traditional cigarette lasted for between 10 and 12 two second inhalations, but provided no evidence to support that. That's <laughs> because there isn't any. They said, based on those figures, each cartomizer lasted for at least 20 cigarettes. They acknowledged that an approximation of 10 to 12 two second inhalations per traditional cigarette might not be representative of the usage of every smoker. I <laughs> think it's probably just one bloke somewhere. <laughs> it's just one bloke. So, the complaint was upheld. The ASA noted the test was conducted after the complaint had been received and we therefore considered the test was inadmissible to support the claim at the time the ad appeared. Notwithstanding that, we were concerned that the test report did not include a detailed methodology and therefore did not allow us to assess the robustness of the test. That really means we didn't believe them. We were also concerned that we had seen no evidence that a traditional cigarette lasted for between 10 and 12 two second inhalations, or that an average packet of traditional cigarettes cost £6.50. The claim, our cartridge is equivalent to about 20 tobacco cigarettes appeared beside the claim, all that needs replacing is the cartomizer that contains liquid nicotine. In that context, we considered consumers would understand the claim to mean that the cartomizer would provide a level of nicotine equivalent to 20 traditional cigarettes. We were therefore concerned that we had not seen sufficient evidence to substantiate the claim that our cartridge is equivalent to about 20 tobacco cigarettes. On that basis, we concluded that the claim had not been substantiated and breached the code. On this point, the ad breached CAP Code Rule 3.1 and 3.7, misleading advertising and substantiation. The ad must not appear again in its current form. We have told Nick O'Sigs to ensure claims were capable of robust substantiation in future. That's basically saying you're telling a pack of lies, stop doing it. What do you make of that, Lorian? I think it's perfectly fair. Um, I think of all the adverts, that was, it was, it's fair and just to ban that one. Listen, there is no argument about that. We can't be making these claims. Yes. I think, I think, I mean, I've reeled about it in the past when we've seen claims of that is worth 40 fags or 50 fags. It patently isn't. It's nonsense. Even if they were going on nicotine delivered to the buccal cavity, if you've got 16 milligram juice in 0 0.7 milligrams of, of capacity in there, there's no way is it going to deliver what a pack of 20 would, never mind a pack of 40. Or a pack of 40, two packs of 20, or three packs of 20, and, and the, there are claims of all those sorts of levels. It's about time these were stopped, and I'm kind of hoping that this ruling by the ASA will make all of the people that make SIG equivalent claims look to their laurels and think, hang on, we probably need to stop doing this. Actually, we definitely need to stop doing this, or definitely substantiate it. Um, that's that's my feeling on it. Sav, I'm, I'm assuming from the look on your face that Chat's had something to say. Chat had a lot to say and then Chat got distracted by the huge amount of icons you had at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> but what Chat had to say, very boring, is very much on your wavelength and he says, ha ha, serves them right. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, at, at, at one point prior to us going live and before I dialed Savvy, I had to go and get a towel because there was that much snot coming out my nose. I was laughing that much. <laughs> Vape and Sam has said, Have we not told the industry for yonks now to stop making the 26 claim? Mark Shaw says, I don't say anything against it, what the ESA have done, because a lot of people were saying maybe it was a witch hunt. No. Um, Leanna Lawless was saying about the the drawers and the length of drawers. She said, research says three seconds is minimum to get enough nicotine, is what research has been saying. 
FMRL says, so if the ESA have the power to reprimand websites and advertising and Trade and Standards has the power to deal with dodgy e-cigs, why do we need the TPD and the MHRA? No, I, let's, let's just, let's, I just, I've just got to go there. Yes, tick, in big tick, three big ticks, five stars, thumbs up. Exactly right. We don't, do we? We don't. We need, we need e-cigs to be protected, but you, you bang on right. If advertising can't tell lies and trading standards is there to protect us, what the hell else do we want? Sorry, shut up. Back to you, Sam. <laughs> There's a comment made in chat. Um, I think it was Whip It Up, but I'm not sure, about um, e not needing advertising. And Mark Shaw followed it up by saying, I also think that most of the TV ads are purposefully uh, provocative, which is asking for trouble. I'd even go as far as to say some producers have even wanted their ads banned to make their product cooler. After all, there's no such thing as bad publicity. And Rachel Coffey has said all they're saying is don't make dodgy claims about a cartridge being equivalent to such and such. I count that as a good thing. Well, yes, as do I. I, I think that's one of the good things to have come out of all of this ASA stuff. And there's another four that have been uh, clobbered but we will come to them after a short break and i'm here to tell you when i say we'll not be talking over the adverts i mean exactly that oh <laughs> back in two And we are back in the room. Welcome back to VT Talk here on Wednesday the 25th of September. It's now 9.24 and 21 seconds on Wednesday. Have you been, were you timing your draws over there? You were, weren't you, Lorian? <laughs> you, you, you were timing how long you suck for. I was, yeah. And now I've, I've, <laughs> I'm trying not to be juvenile, but yeah, no, I was. Um, and whereas I guessed at four seconds, I was well out. It's actually nearer nine seconds. So I imagine most of us are probably underestimating unless we time or have an EVIC. How long we actually suck for? Yes, Sav, Sav's nodding her head. What you got there, Sav? Uh, well, I'm testing on the EVIC, and that's how I knew how long it was before. Because ever since I got the EVIC, I was for the first couple of days, it was like every time I took a draw, how long was that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I know I'm about between five and a half and six and a half, depending on what I'm vaping. Well, that that seems eminently. I suppose that, has anybody got a stopwatch handy? I'll have a, tell us when it's zero somewhere. Oh, I'll, t I'll time you on my EVIC. Oh, go on then. Hang on, I've got to put an atomizer back on it now. All right, well, I'll, I'll do what I've got the clock on the Mac. I'll do from there. It's 23, oh. 24, 
about seven seconds. Yeah, about that. Which seems inordinately fair. Um, before we went to the break, um, Mark Shaw, I think it was, mentioned television adverts, didn't he? He did. Well, we've had uh, we've had three TV adverts, but there's a big, mahusive one. Um, e lights. Uh, let's let's hit the e lights one. This could take a while, but there were eight issues investigated. This is all, and the stuff that got thrown out is important. The stuff that got clobbered is important, but more important are the comments that they made. And I, I kind of, this has also encouraged me, and you'll see why. Here we go. So it's Zandera, e in other words. Um, eight issues investigated, of which two were upheld and six were not upheld. I'm going to kind of skim chat through this. A radio ad, TV ad, internet banner ad, poster at a bus stop, and a display ad on the side of a bus for electronic cigarettes. It sounds like somebody's got it in for them, doesn't it? <laughs> but never mind. The radio ad featured three scenes of vital moments, a wedding, an award ceremony, and the birth of a child. In each case, a key participant was obviously missing, and someone asked, where's Dave? Why is it always Dave? Anyway, a voiceover then stated, what are you missing when you pop out for a cigarette? By switching to e-lights, you can legally smoke indoors with no tobacco, no smell, and around 70% less cost. Blah, 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 blah. Remember that bit. The TV ad, we all know, showed a family gathering in which a number of adults were admiring an infant child. We all know how that goes, so I'm not going to read it out. It's, it's all there. I, I'm not going to play it in for reasons which <laughs> we maybe shouldn't. Let's, let's just, I'll just not. The internet banner ad had text which stated, no tar, no tobacco, 70% cheap, 100% legal, and had a picture of an e-cigarette. The image then changed to show two product packages alongside the text, the satisfying smoking alternative, learn more. At the bottom of the ad was the product logo and the text, e lights UK's best electronic cigarette. The poster ad at the bus stop stated, what are you missing? No tar, no tobacco, no order. Showed an open packet of e lights with two separate parts of an individual electronic cigarette line next to it. And E, the poster on the bus showed an open product pack next to text which stated, what are you missing? No tar, tobacco, legal indoors, e lights smoking reinvented. The ASA received 65 complaints, one from Smoke Free Southwest and 64 from members of the public. That in itself is significant. It's rare that the ASA ever names a complainant. I've not seen it. Have you seen it on anything, uh, Lorian? No, I've, I've checked a few of these things in the past and no, I've not seen specific people mentioned. Well, let's, let's go back to it. Um, because that's that's interesting in and of itself. Nine complainants challenged whether Ad A was irresponsible and harmful because they believed it promoted a nicotine-based product and encouraged and normalised tobacco smoking. Uh, where have we heard those words before? <laughs> I wonder. Let's carry on. One complainant challenged whether ad A and three complainants challenged whether ad B were misleading because they omitted material information about the product, specifically its ingredients, and that it contained nicotine. One complainant challenged whether the claim legally smoke indoors in ad A was misleading because the product was neither smoke nor was it the same as a cigarette. Two complainants challenged whether ad A was offensive because it promoted smoke and equipment one of whom objected particularly to the suggestion that one of the characters could have used the product in a maternity ward. I don't know what for. Smoke Free Southwest and 41 other complainants who believed that Ad A promoted a nicotine-based product and encouraged a normalised smoking or the use of e-lights challenged whether the ad were, was irresponsible and therefore harmful. I never knew Smoke Free Southwest had as many people working in their office. <laughs> Three complainants who believed that Ad, Ad B would be of particular interest to children breached the code by referring to smoking. Five complainants challenged whether Ad B was offensive because it used a baby to promote a smoking related product. And a complainant who believed that Ad C encouraged smoking and the use of e-lights and another complainant who believed the same of Ad's D and E challenged whether the ads were irresponsible. Now. This one, I think, goes to how everybody sees everything. I, I think that the uh, Smoke Free Southwest and the 41 
it's, it's too many, isn't it? It's just too many people. Do you not think it's too many people for one complaint, Lorian? I do. It's um, it is quite surprising, all complaining about the same thing. And probably in the same words. They're from down your neck of the woods. Are people like that down there? Well, hold on. Has it all gone? Oh dear. Okay. No, 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 I'm here. All right. I'm here. Did you did you catch it? Did it all go funny? Did it? It did all just for a split second, yeah. All right. It's because I mentioned the funny people down in the southwest because you're part of the yeah, world, it isn't did. it? <laughs> You live with some yes. queer folks down there. Um, before we go into the response, let's uh, let's hit Sav and find out whether I'm sure Chad's got things to say. Oh yes, Chad has a lot to say. Uh, Mark Shaw has said, "I always thought he likes using a BB in its ad was bad taste, no matter in what context it was meant to be in." But he also says, "Maybe I'm getting old, but I've not seen one e cig ad that I actually like." Lamentable has said, my real complaint with the TV ad is the cruelty in training a baby to dance Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> to which Jeff says, yeah, that was my only complaint also. My favourite comment of the night so far comes from Egomaniac, and he says, and this is word for word, at my age, I don't give a hamster's hiney about being cool. I wasn't even cool when it was cool to be cool. And I thought, I just had to read that because it's such a good comment. I would Bonnet agree. It said, sod off with your normalising smoking, you horrible people. <laughs> Is that exactly <laughs> what was written? That was not word for word. <laughs> Mark Shaw has also said, maybe now if they make ads, they will act a little more responsibly and stop dishing out ammo for the ants. FMRL, FMRL has said, but all NRT adverts promote the consumption of nicotine. Mm -hmm. And Moonlit has said, I'm all for fair and truthful advertising, but it normalises smoking is an abuse of the ASE. I, I, I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest and say I would, I would agree with that. I think that some of these complaints are what's known as vexatious, mm -hmm. uh, which means they're just there to cause problems and they're not real complaints. Um, but... Bear in mind what was said right at the top of this. Eight issues, six denied, only two upheld. So let's run through them because this is interesting and this does inform a lot of what's being said. Um, so here we go. The Radio Advertising Clearance Centre believed the ad targeted existing smokers by informing them that e lights a product legally allowed to be advertised on radio, could be used indoors lacked order and was cheaper in price than traditional cigarettes. They did not believe that it promoted nicotine, which was not mentioned in the ad, nor encouraged or normalised traditional smoking. Instead, the claims by switching to e-lights and smoking reinvented implied the opposite to smokers. Now, I just need to, to, to let everybody know, before an advert can be shown on proper telly, not web telly, but proper telly, or on the radio, it has to go through one of two bodies. There's the Radio Advertising Clearance Centre. They'll look at it, and if there's, a, if there's an issue, they'll come back and tell you. Um, and then there's, there's one for telly, too, called Clearcast. And cutting to the chase on all of this, uh, Elite, Zandera, had gone, as they had to, through the RACC and through Clearcast with both of their adverts and the people that run these are like um, they're like an offshoot if you like of, of advertising standards they're not regulators but they advise um, and they're the people that tell you actually you can't do that you've got to do this you can't do that you've got to do this and it makes some very interesting reading as we go through this so let's let's go back to it um, and go through I mean basically the RACC said that they thought everything was okay. They also believed that BCAP code rule 10.4 did not apply to e-lights because the product was sufficiently distinct from tobacco products so as not to be comparable for the purposes of that rule and was presented as a smoking alternative. They believed listeners would be aware of the distinct difference between the features of electronic cigarettes and traditional cigarettes and would not be associated in the audience's mind with a tobacco product. Um, and that goes all the way through, right the way through all of this little lot, um, that the RACC, which is the body responsible for helping people do this and, and have a lot of say, uh, they had advised e not just on 
well, the RACC on the radio one and uh, Clearcast on the television one. Um, Zandera said of the TV ad that it did not directly ref reference nicotine can be based products, show the electronic cigarette product or claim any benefits, nor did it directly depict smoking. They believed the ad did not normalise the act of smoking and was not in any way irresponsible or harmful. I would agree. Clearcast said great care and consideration was taken when approving the ad as get that it was approved. All right. This was approved. Uh, as electronic cigarette advertising was extremely new to the UK. They said the code banned the advertising of all tobacco products, but e-cigarettes, although a nicotine product, was not a tobacco product. They pointed out that e-cigarettes were not mentioned in the code and therefore they considered the product was not prohibited to be advertised. Um, they were familiar with Rule 10.4 and considered e lights did share features with tobacco products in that they were visually strongly reminiscent of cigarettes. Um, in addition, the description of the product as an electronic cigarette would make a direct link with a tobacco product. Therefore, they considered that to comply with Rule 10.4, the ad could not show the product, either on its own or in use, contain the words electronic cigarette or e-cigarette, or show any product packaging. And it's, this is important. The people that approve these things have said, look, at, we looked at this and we were on the safe side. Do you get that the same way, Lorian? Yeah, there's no question about that. Yeah, they they sought advice, and the advice they were given was that this essentially what you're about to put out is is fine by us. We can see no issues, <coughs> see no issues, which is a good thing. Yes, they've they've, they've been through it and, and sorted it all out and 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 tried to make sure that they're not gonna be wrong, if you like, that they're not gonna get it wrong. And I just want to shoot down to the end uh, about the television advert because this is this is quite important. Um, it was upheld. We noted clear cast reasoning that if ad B had included the products, features or ingredients, it was likely to have breached B cap code rule 10.4. However, we noted the rule 10.4 only required that ads for non-tobacco products, such as e-cigarettes, did not reference or promote smoking or tobacco and did not include a design, colour, imagery, logo style or the like that might be associated in the audience's mind with a tobacco product. Nonetheless, we considered that the code did not prevent an ad containing verbal or text references to an e-cig, e-cigarette or vaporizer or information indicating that the product contained nicotine, providing that it did not also create a link between that product and smoking or tobacco products. We recognised that e-cigarettes were still a relatively new product in the UK and considered that it was important that such ads made the nature of the product being advertised clear and whether or not it contained nicotine was material information that needed to be included in the ads in order to avoid the likelihood of misleading consumers. We therefore concluded that ads A and B were misleading and I think that that's the good thing because what they've said in that piece is look lads we know that what you've got to look lady you probably cannot show that or we're going to jump on you but what you can do very easily is have somebody voicing over saying elates electronic cigarettes the alternative to smoking contains nicotine age 18 or over go to wibbly wobbly wobbly wherever it happens to be and that, that, to me, that's what the ASA is saying there. Now, I've had to deal with these before in another life as editor of a magazine because you get involved with it. Um, and that's exactly the kind of thing. That kind of thing would come back and say exactly that about other products. Um, but basically, they're saying, this is what you should have said. This is what you can say. And we're not going to kick you up the bum if you do, even if anybody complains. That was why I said it was a good thing. What do you reckon, Lorian? I think in principle you're right. Um, my personal feeling is that the baby thing doesn't bother me. Um, like you said, that's a really personal thing as to what you feel is appropriate in adverts and there are a lot of inappropriate adverts out there. Um, I was concerned personally by the fact they, they said there was a relationship between young adults being attracted to the baby. I'm not comfortable with the fact they've banned that advert because I think it was actually a good advert. I don't use e-lights, I never will obviously because I'm already here. 
Um, I, I thought it was a good advert. I think it did what it needed to do. So I think it's a great shame that it's been banned. But I take what you're saying in that they certainly look like they are making room um, for e cig ads in the future. Well, what they've done is they've said that the ad uh, may not appear in its current form. Mm. They can redo the voiceover, I think, and it'll be fine. Um, because that's all they've upheld. They haven't actually upheld the baby thing. As far well, as I can see. It was given one of their reasons. I thought it was given as one of their reasons that although it wouldn't appeal to young children, the association between what the advert meant and so the young adults might be attracted to the the whole dancing baby thing. Yeah, but they didn't. Maybe it was just a footnote in there. Yes, it was. It was a footnote, but they didn't. Um, they didn't uphold the complaint about the dancing baby. Is okay. the point? Um, that that's that's the whole thing about that. They didn't uphold that. I mean, I know the ASA does not like babies being used to advertise anything other than baby food and nappies and dummies and. Toys R Us and the th baby things, in other words. That they, they, they really don't like it because it's a bit like fluffy bunnies, isn't it? And, and, and cats and, and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, they'd much prefer that products were sold on their own, recognise answers, if you like, rather than, uh, you know, a fluffy cat being used to sell Galaxy or something. I mean, so... They'll, they'll be a little bit down on it. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Um, it's very, very interesting, though, that most of these complaints about A-Lights were just not upheld at all. Uh, we'll take a quick blast from chat, I think, Sav, because I've just checked yeah. the time. Yeah, I've got a little bit. Matt CLK has said, isn't it sad when it comes down to this? People complain about every little thing nowadays. Dream Thief has said, maybe it's about time we complained about the NRT adverts as they definitely don't do what they advertise. Yes. FMRL has said, very interesting response. The details of this haven't been mentioned by the mass media. That's the point. Know. That mm, is the which, point. Yeah. Uh, to which Leanna Lawless responded that the e light thing was briefly mentioned tonight. I will try to get that out again. <laughs> tonight on Watchdog. And FMRL has also said, so all they have to do is have a little bit of small print at the end of the advert saying contains nicotine. To me, that sounds like the ASA have basically approved the advert if they just mention contains nicotine, therefore not a ban. That's that's pretty much the way I'm seeing it as well. That what the, you know that the, those adverts that you see where they come out and the, you've got a whatever it happens to be our car. Loads of other cars are available. And, it, and, and underneath it goes, this model not available in the UK, this model not available in this colour, this model not available with everything that we're showing you, but that's mm -hmm. the one we're using for the advert anyway. Suckers! Mm -hmm. And that's on there for like 10 seconds and then disappears. Yeah. That's all they want them to do, I think. Yeah, I mean, the biggest one that, that jumps out to me, being female that does that, is if you ever watch adverts for mascara, they'll say in the small print this model's wearing false eyelashes this is not actually what you're going to get out of the tube but because it's got that little thing saying this model is wearing fal false eyelashes for that few seconds at the bottom of the page they're fine um, I'm going to say like most blokes I take as much notice of false eyelash and mascara adverts as I do <laughs> of all ways and tampax and as Dave <laughs> Case said the immortal line of may help weight loss as, as part of a calorie controlled diet we see that at the bottom of adverts all the time. Mm. Yes. So, basically then, I think what, what, what we're seeing here is that the ASA said, look, lads, everybody else gets away with dodgy stuff. If you do this, you can be as dodgy as them and we'll let you get on with it. And I don't mean to imply that anybody's dodgy, obviously, but these little little bits of, of writing underneath, um, that's, that's why I felt that, that, that what's come out of, of those is a good thing because it shows the way forward. The big thing that I've taken out of it is that no way are they looking to ban electronic cigarette advertising. They're not. They just want it to conform to a code and it looks as though they're making that code as they go along. Now, we'll take some adverts and then when we we'll come back, I'll explain why I think this is a good thing and then we'll talk about the ACIG Summit. We'll be back in two minutes.
And that must be the longest preamble before the titles for any show on VTTV ever. I completely forgot to play the myth. <laughs> Such a nutter. Honestly, seriously. Yes, um, I think this is going to open the door for proper adverts. There's a whole load more from uh, who we're looking at. Sky, 10 motives, 5 colours. There's a whole load. Um, go and have a look on the ASA website it's interesting reading it's really really interesting reading and it's interesting as well to have a look at some of the other ones that are there so you can get some feel for you know how they come at it I, I, I would seriously suggest the ASA is probably the most unbiased regulatory body I've ever come across because they apply the letter of the law and it, it does make some interesting reading though when you see what people actually complain about mm. I I, I'm seriously considering writing a letter of complaint about so many feminine hygiene products being <laughs> on a bloody tea time. I, I agree. And I want to complain about the chairs for old people being on and Judge Judy. <laughs> I would have thought that that was quite appropriate myself. But Maybe never. for Judge Judy, but it really makes me feel old. And it's bad when I start going, ooh, look. Oh, you're not, you're not starting to feel uh, your age, are you? Well, uh, when you get the chair that you push the button and it, it just gets up for you. I mean, that's just good. Well, I don't know anything about them. Where's the advert? <laughs> <laughs> that I've got to see. <laughs> I'm starting to feel my age now. Um, yes, right. Come on, let's 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 do the job. Let's do the job. Yes, it, it, the the whole thing that's come out of the the ESA with all of these rulings that they've made, to me, they've laid it out. In words of one syllable, there you are, lads. This is how you do an e cig advert. Do what we've said, and it's fine. And then all of the smoke free everywhere northwest, southeast, southwest, northeast, Scotland, Wales, Brewer Claddock, where the hell ever, they can complain as much as they like. If you do it the way we've told you, you're gold. And I think that's brilliant. I think that lays it out. I think that says, right. That's it, open season. If you can afford it, get on the telly and get advertising. And why not? What do you reckon of that, Lorian? I'm all for it. And I think um, given how difficult it's going to be to make a good e cig advert, unlike some of the ones the states have seen, I think we could be, have some really good adverts, actually. Genuinely good adverts, fingers crossed. I, I, I still like the Australian one that we did on Sunday. I haven't seen that one. Oh, it's brilliant. Ah, oh, my name's Bruce. This is an e cig you can't get one of these where I live, but if you could, I'd have one. It's an e-cig and my name's Bruce. 
so you know <laughs> be fine shouldn't do that I'm g- I'll be upsetting Australians left right and centre I'm sure of it shall we uh, shall we shall we shoot before on? you do can I just read a quick thing that Moonlit's just put on regarding the the little byline that could go on these adverts uh-huh. cigarette equivalences may vary between users is also something that could be put on instead of the the claims it's an interesting one I mean let's let's you know I, I'm, I'm a big fan of quick and dirty figures you know that um, mm. I think some sometimes people spend months and months and years and years investigating and studying something that, that everybody already knew or you could work out on the back of an envelope. You notice how I didn't say a fag packet? <laughs> or be a mat. Or be a mat. That, that simply you could work out on, on, on a, an envelope. And, and again, I'll, I, if you don't mind, I'll make you a chat. If you used to smoke 20 a day of whatever, whether they were rollies, off the shelf, custom built, tailor made, what the hell ever, doesn't matter. If you smoked 20 a day, how much juice do you get through a day now? Doesn't matter how long you've been vaping, how much juice do you get through a day now? Please. Click the clatter. Has watched. What the saying, Sav? 5 mil, 3 mil, 5 mil, 3 to 4 mil, 3 to 5 mil, 3 to 5, 5 a few, 3 to 4, 5, 4, 5, 3, 3, 5. Eight, six, nine, nine, House. three, four. <laughs> <laughs> One to two, three to five, two to three, five to six. Are we are we, are we kind of settling around the, the sort of three to five mark? A three to five seems to be the most popular, yeah. Can we say four? We'll say four. Four mils a day for a 20 a day smoker that was. I'm going to say for 20 fags you need four mils. That's what I'm going to say. That's, what are you laughing at now? <laughs> Have a look at this, mental. people. Look at that. Where is she? Have a look at this. Look, she's gone. Oh, so the mental just typed in, Sav, you've just read out my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to somebody sensible who hasn't burst into laughing at all. How much do you use now and how many did you use to smoke, Lauren? I'm a bit embarrassed now, actually, just hearing those figures right now. <laughs> I was I ended up on rollies with so I was smoking skinny filter tip rollies with two filters in, and I maybe got in the end I was on about ten a day, maybe fifteen. Why the hell did I you bother? Through, eh? Why did you bother? Because I, I, I love smoking. Yes, That's but with I, two with two filters in, my dear, with two filters in, according to the who, who? I know I should be safe. Oh, Absolutely, perfectly safe. You'd get nothing out of them with two filters in. Filters stop nicotine from getting to your lungs, according to the who. It was my midwife that told me to do that. Pardon? That was her recommendation was two filter tips. Um, but fluid wise, I probably get through near eight mils a day. You're a profligate woman. <laughs> I know, that's why I said I'm slightly ashamed. That's deary me. What strength <laughs> is it though? I bet it's two milligram. It's either six or eight, so it's ever so low. Six or eight? Yeah. Like I said, why do you bother? Because I love the sensation of, of um, inhaling and exhaling. That's always been my thing. That's what I love, personally. All right. Well, that's, that's cool. That I means whatever floats you bought. I would suggest that you would be inhaling and exhaling less if you used a stronger juice. But if that's not <laughs> what you want to do, that's cool. And, and yet again, and yet again, that just shows how different we all are and how we each need different things out of E6. If anybody from up on high is watching, you need to take notice of things like this. You really, really do. We all have different ways of using them, different reasons for using them, and different tastes and flavours and everything else. There's no way one size fits all. Trust me. You're just going to look at me. It's never going to happen. Yeah, um, I mean, the the difference of what's coming through from chat, I mean, very boring saying he uses roughly the same amount of liquid as Lorian, but his is 30 milligram strength. So the, the difference is not one person is the same. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, I do keep saying this. There's, there's a hell of a lot of money gets wasted on studies, and we could, you could write it on the back of an envelope. You just need go and, you know, if, if 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 somebody from on high had gone to vape fest and just said to people, how much juice do you use? That I told them, strength is it? That I told them, 
What what device do you use? That assured them. What flavour is it? That have offered it to them. Mm-hmm. That have had all of the what was it two and a half three thousand people there. Yeah. That are known in no time flat. That have had all the information. They could have gone oh well. There's no way we're going to be able to make one thing that the people, all these people, it's just not going to happen. Easy. Piece of cake. Doddle. But there's going to be an opportunity for rattling the cage of uh, the people in power, as we will show you momentarily. Have Sting, we'll play it in. Let's go to camera four. The e-cigarette summit, science, regulation and public health at the Royal Society of London, November the 12th, 2013. That's when it is. The full programme is now available to download. Early bird prices are available until October the 4th. Lorian, you were telling me there's been a bit of uh, to and fro on this in the forums. There has, and I'm, I, I do understand where it's come from, and I really I would like people to understand what this is about. There's a, there is a feeling that um, users have been excluded because of the cost of the tickets. Um, and I think it's really important that people understand that the cost of the tickets is what's paying for the event. This isn't a money-making thing. This is about getting experts in a room, Jeremy Mean and Deborah Arnott in a room with people like Clive Bates and and Robert West um, to have a discussion about e-cigs with an audience who can ask questions and will be taking notes. It's it's quite an important thing, I think, yeah. Well, let, let, let's, let's be right about it and go to the who should attend bit. It says, the e-cigarette summit will provide a timely opportunity for all stakeholders to debate and explore the future of e-cigarettes and will include high-level panel debates from opposing perspectives to ensure a balanced and objective debate. In particular, the event will be relevant to legislators and policy advisors, health providers, health charities and health practitioners, public health professionals, scientific community with interest in tobacco harm reduction, medical and health professionals and e-cigarette industry stakeholders. In other words, it actually isn't really aimed at vapors. It's not a demonstration, it's not a celebration, it's not a trade show, it's not a fest. This is, uh, this is the kind of thing that, that Jerry Stimson does all of the time with things like Health in the City, where you'll pay 1,200 quid to go and take part in what is in fact a conference, a seminar, conference, debate, an exchange of, of views and minds. And this is, to me, this is quite important because, as Lorian has said, two of the biggest voices in all of this, the two that have colluded together, it has been said, allegedly, to bring together the uh, adherence to the TPD that they're looking forward to, will be there. And although they're saying that, you know, uh, the MHRA is not for turning. I really feel that if the preponderance of opinion there is that medical, medicinal regulation is not appropriate, I don't think it'll go there. Sav? Yeah, there's a fair bit in chat saying, well, surely they should still be including the, the voice of the users and they feel they're being excluded. Um so there's still a lot of mixed feeling about this, that there's going to be an awful lot of talking going on to the people that count, but the people who've got the, the most to say aren't going to be able to say it. Um, I see the point. I will be there. That's already known. And Lorian, you're going to be there too, aren't you? I am, yes. Yeah, so there is a voice for the consumers. There's, that's, that's not to be worried about. Well, absolutely. I mean, we've, we've been asked if we'll go and man a kind of a demo table where I'm going to take everything I've got and a few bits I haven't got, if I can beg, borrow or steal them, so that anybody who's got an interest can see what these things are. You can guarantee I'll not be taking any lucky ladies. I can, I can 100% guarantee you that. Uh, I'll be taking the good stuff. The big stuff, the mod stuff, the esoteric stuff, the stuff that we use, the stuff that I use. So th- there will be representation there. Um, and I dare say 
that you know Asita will have people there Eka will quite probably have people there that's the way it's going to be it, it's it's kind of a it's got to be controlled I've, I've been to these things before and it's kind of that's the way it has to be otherwise the likes of Jeremy Main and Arnott and a whole host of other people who we really 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 need to talk to just wouldn't go like that that the thing we did a couple of weeks back if you remember Sav um, yes. there were people who said they would not share a platform with the likes of well me really want it yes and we probably need to uh, hear from chat because we're over time I think uh, they're just asking again will vendors be going to this thing do we know um I, I I I honestly don't know. I don't know who's taking tickets up or what. I'll I'll do my best to find out. Um, and if it's going to be worthwhile, then you know we'll we'll um, we'll get Oliver on the show and talk about it. But rest assured, this is not. It's not meant to exclude people. It's meant to include the people that are making the decisions that we don't like. And there's some big guns there firing on our behalf. And I mean big guns, the biggest of the guns. So it's, you know, it's good stuff. It is good stuff. I think it'll be uh, very informative and I hope it's going to work in our favour. I think if the arguments are stated the way they have been so far, it will do. And of course, whatever has happened in uh, plenary with the TPD will have happened by then. And we might be in a situation where we can just go because it didn't go through that would be really you smiled at that Lorian. oh i did i'm going to be practicing my hand gestures if that is the case believe me oh god yes yes i'll have a t-shirt made you didn't get it you're not having it i'm not giving it up go to hell <laughs> um yes we've got to give the last the last word to chat as per usual sav so there's not a lot i can actually read out oh, they've gone a me. bit mad have they What's what yeah, on? Yeah, but uh, well, I'll give you an example. I'll give Jeff Benny in the last word, and he's asking at this summit, do we know if they'll be free hookers? <laughs> How's he spelling hookers? Not the right way. <laughs> well, now you see, you see, not the right way. That yeah, depends leave that what to you him. consider the right way exactly. is. <laughs> it, it I'll really leave that does. to you to decide. I've got to say, Jeff Benny always makes me smile. Yes, he does. I won't know what his real name is, because that's a handle. It's, it's, nobody would be called Jeff Benny, would they? It's probably, <laughs> Phil, it's probably Phil Bennion's brother, you know. Could be. Could be. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Lorian for coming and joining us tonight. I hope you feel a little bit better about the Advertising Standards Authority now than you did earlier on this afternoon. I, I, a, a bit, yeah. I can, see, I can see where you're coming from, definitely. Goodly Goodingtons. We like that. Um, so thanks again for coming in. Thanks again to Sav for doing the sterling job that only Sav can do, I have discovered, because I've tried to do what Sav does. And I can't. I can't read quick enough. And I know, I do know, though, you've got Kat in the background feeding as well. I have, you? yes. So I it's, have. And it's a big, big thank you to Kat as well. Um, where I would be without the team, I just do know where I'd, I know where I'd be. I'd be in a big mess on the floor. I've got to tell you, I've got to say this, I might as well, we're over time now, if I'm going to get kicked, I might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. This, this VTTV team, I am so proud to be part of it, they're a cracking bunch of people, they crack me up all the time, and they keep me happy when I'm sad, they're a brilliant set of people to work with, and they are so supportive, I'm really chuffed to be part of this, and I'm really chuffed that you've all tuned in to watch as well, um, I know that sounds a bit trite, but it isn't, it's not, I am. It, it thrills me to death that people watch what we do. It thrills me to death that you listen to this idiot letting his gums flap as much as he does. I'm going to see you tomorrow night. I don't know who with. I don't know if we've got Daz and Keith or just Keith or just Daz. I don't know who I've got tomorrow night, do you? I don't know. We might have pie. Pie? Did Daz say he was, did Delia say he was bringing pie? No, but now we might have to. Is he hinting that he's bringing pie? <laughs> He never said he was making shepherd's pie today, but I'd prefer the apple pie. No, I don't like shepherd's. No, they don't taste straight. It's that, it's that toenails. I find it's the big stick, but... Yeah, gets stuck between your teeth. Uh, I it, it, it's a bit hard on the, the old gums. Yes, yes. We're back to the ladies' hygiene products again, but in a <laughs> completely different way. 
Uh, I'll better say good night before I start cracking the joke I'm thinking of. <laughs> no, not tonight. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, don't forget to tune in as well on Friday for RY4 Radio. On Sunday for... Who's attacking Dave's box? We're all tackling Dave's box. Right, so Dave gets his box tackled on Sunday. Uh, Monday, it's uh, tip your tin. Oh, tin your tip with Gary Dibley. Tuesday, um, is Mark all back? I don't know. I don't no, he's not. So. I don't think he is back on uh, on Tuesday. So it'll be yet another team talk. <laughs> you can't miss that. Last night was brilliant. Can I just jump in before we go and say that the Vaping Daz is going over to RY4 Radio <coughs> right now to have a play. So head on over there to play with Daz's head. Oh, yes. Go and tell him you can't hear him. It'll scare him to death. <laughs> yeah. Just just type in, no, still not loud enough. No, right channel's yeah. gone. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it has or it hasn't. Just mess with his head. Because he loves it, really. He does. What kind of Daz? Eh? What? Who? <laughs> no. Right. Hey, it's been Corbin. We'll see you next time. Until then, vape on, vape hard, and nil carborundum. Illegitimai. Don't let the bastards grind you down either. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>